guess fighting with the right people also. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Alright, um, I think the, 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 the point is this, I think we must... Um, let's look at the X-ray. I think, of course, uh, if you look at the wave, you can identify the wave, you know which wave to take on, I think, I think you can become successful a bit quicker. But it does not necessarily mean that um, other industries that is probably not at the wave at the time does not make you a successful person. But I, what I can tell you is that a recession at 2009, which is imminent, um, it actually gives you an equal playing level field again for every industry. Lehman Brothers worth billions of dollars can go down to zero, but with the collapse of the giants like this, it gives an opportunity for smaller people to then become the next giant. What I'm trying to tell you is that there's no Eureka moments. You will not have one point that you knock your head at the bathtub running outside naked. You can finally come out with an idea that makes you millions of dollars. I think what it does is that look at what you have now. What is to your best knowledge that you have at this point in time? It could be you are very good with flowers, you can, have, you can start opening up a florist. But that not necessarily means that your florist is the wave. But it's because of your passion for flowers. It's because of your hard work and dedication and focus on building your florist. It will then be successful. So I think that's the most important. Look at what you have, what your best knowledge that you have now, your best access to which community and network that you have, and that's where you must look at how you can leverage your people. And that's the most important thing. Thanks. Let me add on, on top of all this what I said. In my speech that I said, uh, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. So, actually there's plenty of ideas out there. As I said, many of business ideas and patterns were found. There's less than 0.1% of all these business ideas and patterns found as commercial lines. So, uh, smart people, like me, I'm not very creative. Actually, I derive my idea by just copying somebody else. So I just take somebody's out ideas, implement it, localize it, and improvise it, and implement it in Malaysia. Like my company, Asia Media, we run the largest bus TV network in Malaysia. So to the, to the nearest country we've seen this bus TV network is Singapore and Hong Kong and China. All of these companies are doing very successfully. I, I ask myself, I'm not from media industry, how do I play a part in media industry? But I'm quite surprised that to our neighbor, nobody has actually copied the idea from our neighbor and implement this in Malaysia. So I come up with the idea of having this exactly the same thing and doing it in Malaysia and doing extremely well about it. Just copy it and improvise it according to the Yeah, I mean, just very short, quickly, just like we say that everything I said was very true, especially about how the idea is probably like the least important. I mean, it's really, really small part of it all. Because as, as usual, any big business opportunity, in fact, I actually, actually hate the word idea. You know, I think it's really misleading and it's very fluffy and stuff. It, any awesome business opportunity you identify, I bet you like hundreds of people are going after it, or people already thought of it, so on and so forth. So there's so much work to be done, you know, to deliver and execute and improvise and innovate on top of it just to go for it. You know I mean? like any business success story you heard, like I'm sure like there's 500 people going for the same opportunity to fail. So a lot of energy, I think that's too much focus on the idea can be better spent delivering, getting started, getting into action, and looking for the right people and making things happen. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, let's keep you closer. <laughs> Ideas are nobody's monopoly. Think big, think fast, think ahead. Hello guys, uh, great presentation to all of you. I'm Michael from MichaelTill.com. Uh, this question is dedicated to any of you who wish to answer it as a group again. Uh, do you believe in the stereotypical perception that when you start up their businesses, they should charge relatively lower costs in their services and products to gain market entry, market recognition, or just to be there. What do you think about this view and do you agree with it and why? Thank you. You put up the 
Okay, just to share a little bit of experience. Uh, basically, I think you have no choice. Uh, the point is that when you started up your company, you basically you got to sell cheap. But that does not mean that you got to sell cheap and that's going to be your only advantage. But what we can say is that you've got to differentiate your products. You see, you've got to first differentiate your products. You've got to sell it at a price that people will accept your differentiated products, which is low price. And once they accept it, you should then be able to actually charge a premium later on. But if you start to have a differentiated product, yet the price is an extremely high premium, and you have nobody as your trial, and nobody as your testimonial, then of course, your product will never be known. So I think you've got to then, of course, you know, price your house a little bit handicapped, but at the meantime, please don't take it as the only strategy. Uh, a lot of people, you know, even Malaysians, become very successful because they are low cost. But I think that's not the key important thing. The key important thing is what you differentiating. And once people feel your product, they know the differentiating factor, they don't mind paying later on. So, so I can see. I think there's one word that's most important, value. You must provide value to the customer. Value can be brought in by either having lower cost or added value. But most of the time, I don't think value is brought in by having lower cost. I'll give you one example. Um, when I started MSC Cyberport, there was, we were looking around in Johor for buildings to turn into an MSC status buildings because we wanted, wanted MSC status very quickly for Johor. And we identified this one building, at that time it was called Menara Sarawak. The building's occupancy was 30% and the rental rate was 1 ringgit 40 cents. And nobody wanted to rent the building. So I went to the building owner and I told them, look, change the name of the building to be my company name, right? I will get MSC status, increase the rental to 2 ringgit 50 cents. The upside between 1 ringgit 40 cents and 2 ringgit 50 cents, share it with me. I take 70, you take 30. Today, at that time, the building's occupancy was 40%. Today it's about 95% <laughs> at 2 ringgit 50 cents, right? So it's all about adding value to whatever assets you have. Anything else you guys want to get? Great. Um, uh, maybe instead of four, and then I think we're pushing our luck. I'm pushing my luck. Just take two more, and then I'll do a closing. The first two just now. And I'm going to be a lady with you. First time, lady, check out. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and our distinguished speakers. Um, first of all, thank you for the inspiring talk just now. And um, I have a question regarding something that is pretty common, but it's something that all of us have a problem with, and um, it's time. And everyone, especially businessmen, say that time is money. So I know that all these successful entrepreneurs on stage, they juggle a lot of things. Can you, any of you share your experiences of how you did it? Your experiences with time management? Thank you. That's a nice question. I'll do a quick, quick one on that. Is that, firstly, everyone's got 24 hours. We don't have more hours. You don't have less hours. And secondly, how about other people's time? That's all. Jeff, um, when, when you talk about time management, uh, what's important in your entrepreneur is that you don't go ahead and go. More importantly, you try to actually partner someone with the expertise and the knowledge so that you actually learn at the same time. If anything screws up, you're going to have the. You're not going to go through a child and error in the industry. So you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna waste a lot of time there. Thus, while you move on to other things overseas, someone needs to be back here to look after it. You can't leave the ship empty and sailing by itself. You just can't take a light boat or a speedboat and go to the nearest island, or the ship continues sailing. 